This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a, a returning guest. I'm excited to, to have him back on the show because actually the last time they were on here, we talked about the marijuana, and actually they, they really are an incredible technology company. We're talking no other than Global Payout, Inc. Well, they trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol G-O-H-E, and what they are is a software technology company. Provides uh, They provide solutions to the emerging uh, fine tech uh, market, and with us today, is the CEO of the company, Jim Hancock. Jim, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Everett. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, give my listeners a brief recap of global history and its entrance into the fine tech software marketplace, if if you would. I would be glad to. Thank you. Well, if you follow Global Payout uh, going back seven years, you may know that we have a background in, as being a program manager in the prepaid card industry, and that's for Visa, MasterCard, and Discover. So we work with processors and issuing banks, both here domestically in the U.S. and then outside the U.S. In 2014, we switched our emphasis to an electronic platform uh, that we call the Consolidated Payment Platform. And uh, it, it's th- this platform allowed us to be able to transfer money to employees and suppliers and vendors of companies here in the U.S. and outside the U.S. And then we began working with IT partners uh, in 2016 um, where we uh, began building a platform that is directly involved with commercial banks and just like license and licensed money transmitters. At the beginning of this year, we were ready to launch our new software technology in the fintech market that we that we've called Global Reserve Platform. So the Global Reserve Platform is in in our in our view is the most powerful and customizable payment solution for businesses or B two B in the fintech marketplace. So our focus is made directly to you know, small, medium-sized businesses, not consumers. Uh, we've got a, you know, a, a specific vertical industries that we go after, and the platform can provide mobile app capability, online access, uh, be able to move money, uh, ACH here in the U.S. and SEPA in Europe, uh, even into Asia. Um, it even has biometric and authentication management. So uh, now, now we've got a platform. I believe that's going to be a, a, amazing. What we're going to be able to do worldwide. You know, what vertical uh, industries will Global Payout focus its software technology branded as the Global Reserve Platform? Well, that's a good question. Um, we focused on four uh, vertical industries. Uh, first is the logistics and shipping industry. Uh, logistic companies deliver products in the U.S. and outside the U.S. and need to pay delivery and trucking companies in an efficient and cost-effective manner. But right now, they use wires and checks from commercial banks to make payments. If they use ours, they're going to be able to use it much quicker with our payment platform that's much uh, not only quicker but a lot cheaper than using a commercial bank. The second industry that we, we are focused on is the small and medium-sized banks and credit unions. They need to offer their merchant account holders an online or mobile uh, software access to be able to make direct ACH payments for invoices to suppliers and vendors and even utilize for internal payments as payroll for employees. The third uh, vertical market is the international travel companies. And we're, we're, we focus on the international travel companies because of the experience they need for better foreign currency exchange rates. And we have that capability in our system is to offer that, that, uh, that currency rate. Uh, fourth, uh, any small or medium-sized businesses, um, and I'll give you an example. Uh, in the last week, we, we closed a contract with a, a VAT refund company, VAT refund company located in London, um, that manages the entire process of European VAT recovery, and that's VAT taxes being charged how people can get their money back uh, from in a refund. We uh, give those companies a better, a more efficient way of being able to pay those people back. So those are the four industries we have we're focused on right now. Well, I got a couple of questions. If I was listening to this interview, one, with your global reserve platform, uh, do you lease out the technology? One, do you sell it directly? Give me an example of your business customers who use the Global Reserve Platform, and how do you monetize that? Sure, I'd be glad to. Well, uh, we, 
we can do it a variety of ways. Um, let me give you an example of how we do it, and I'll give you a logistics company as an example. Uh, one of our first customers is a, uh, a, a logistics company called Cagney Global Logistics in Dallas, Texas. So for over 28 years, that company has been a leader in global uh, logistics, warehousing, local delivery, residential delivery, and storage. Uh, Cagney makes deliveries of products for Home Depot and Walmart to retail stores and directly to customers. And these deliveries are made by independent trucking and, and courier services. These independent trucking companies need to get paid on a timely and less expensive basis rather than wires and checks uh, from commercial banks. Therefore, uh, uh, Cagney uses the Global Reserve platform to pay directly to the trucking companies. And then these companies can access their funds to a mobile wallet, and move their money to their own checking account or even to a prepaid Visa or MasterCard. So uh, we can charge. We can charge. Do it to do that. We can charge a maintenance fee on a regular basis. We've we license the technology. Uh, we can do it on, uh, through our own brand uh, with our own with our own platform. Um, and we get and then we charge by transaction. So we make money on each transaction, whether that be a load or a payment uh, to an account. Uh, or payment to a, a debit or credit card. Two questions here. Is this a patent technology one, and how big is this market space? Well, the, it, 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 is had a, it does have a patent technology to it, but there, is, there, there are other competitors to it. I think what, what sets us apart is not necessarily whether we can patent or not. It's, it's the ability to be able to, to have access to the complex um, uh, intricacies of, of the platform. So, uh, and, and whether you use it online or whether you use it with a mobile app, um, it's important because of our relationship with our IT company that we've actually uh, built this uh, product. So, yes, it, 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 does have, it does have a lot of uh, asset value to it. Um, whether it's, whether it's uh, uh, patentable or not is, is, still, uh, is, is still not, we're still not sure about patentability, but, but you know, regardless, there isn't really much competition in this compared to what we have. And how big a market space is this? Is it a billion dollar, multi-billion dollars? It's a multi-billion dollar network. Uh, the fintech industry, uh, as you know, over the last three years has been growing uh, every year dramatically. Um, and the same goes with, with what we're focused on. There's various ways of getting in the fintech industry, but we feel where we are, uh, you know, we feel it's going to be uh, a, a multi-billion dollar growth uh, industry. The reason why I ask you those questions, it looks like you guys are kind of establishing yourself as a holding company, and you kind of got ownership in, in two other subsidiaries. One is a, a bank management company. The other is in the cannabis industry. So tell us what your plans are and the objectives for those other two. Well, uh, yes, we have two subsidiaries. Uh, one is uh, ISBC Holdings. Um, we, own, we are an 80% shareholder of ISBC, ISBC Holdings. Uh, they are a bank management company for, an IS, for a sovereign na uh, Native uh, American bank located in South Dakota. And we anticipate ISBC Bank uh, to utilize the Global Reserve Platform for bank account holders, much like our focus into other small banks. But in addition, ISBC Holdings, as a bank uh, management uh, company, will create revenue for bank depositors uh, utilizing their bank products. So they have a chance of, of creating a, a good uh, piece of revenue, which is going to come to uh, our financial statement because we own 80% of them. Uh, the other subsidiary company that we that we uh, uh, we started uh, back a couple years ago is um, it, we have a majority position in is MoneyTrack Technology. Now MoneyTrack has positioned itself as an electronic payment platform branded as the Virtue Network Solutions for merchants, growers, and customers in the cannabis industry. So as as licensee of Global Payout uh, Global Reserve Platform, MoneyTrack has created income to Global Payout for payment of licensing fee in the first quarter. And then we anticipate a consistent license fee revenue to uh, Global over the next three quarters and, st and, and, and also consistent in 2018. Uh, so wh what we're doing is that we're really sort of focused on, uh, on MoneyTrack, focusing on the cannabis industry, 
uh, Global Payout itself uh, as a holding company will support it, uh, but we also are working independently of our subsidiaries uh, using our technology in other, other industries. My guest today is uh, Jim Hancock. He is the CEO of Global Payout. They trade on the OTC market uh, under the ticker symbol G-O-H-E. Their stock's around $0.03. Cents. Uh, their market cap's just a little bit north of uh, $22 uh, million. Now, we know that generally commercial banks are not looking for growers but merchants and suppliers of marijuana, we understand that they have a solution to help uh, cannabis companies to use their commercial banks. Can you enlighten us a little bit on that? Sure. Um, well, you know, our uh, money tracks core focus as a subsidiary of Global Payout is delivering technology solutions to uh, commercial banks and high risk industries, and, and cannabis is one of them. Um, so these merchant bank account holders will need to meet all the necessary AML as well as KYC mandates. Um, so by administering what we call a full compliance management tool, um, and we, in fact, we just came out with a press release today, we, we have a, a joint venture relation, relationship with uh, CFN, um, Compliance Financial Network, uh, and what we're doing with them is they're helping us uh, with a full compliance management tool to be able to offer to merchants who are in the cannabis industry a chance to open up a bank account at a bank that's going to be supporting uh, that business. And, uh, but the only way to do that is to be compliant. And that means uh, because it seems to be a cash business, what we're trying to do is get into, into being a non-cash business and be able to track everything that's going on, everything from purchasing the product until, and, and, and all the way through selling the product. So we're going to focus on helping merchants in this in the cannabis industry uh, get a good banking relationship, and we can offer that through our relationship with CFN. You guys are currently on on, on the pink sheet uh, public status over the counter, if you will. Do you have any plans for Global Payout uh, as a public company to uh, go maybe to the next level? And, and what are your plans for the next twelve months? Well, we we have been you know, filling out our quarterly and annual disclosure on the ATC, but Global as a public company needs to become a fully reporting company. Uh, so we will be uh, uh, filing a Form Ten with proper audits uh, no later than the fourth quarter of, of this year. Um, the Form 10 filing will help form, obviously, a bigger shareholder base that we think in bringing other brokerage firms that will hopefully bring an increased uh, stock volume. So uh, an increase in revenue every quarter, uh, more than we've ever done, also is going to help us also. So, and, we, and we will show that through some of the revenue that we're going to start uh, uh, sharing here over the next two or three quarters. Uh, but no, we know we need to get fully reporting, and I feel that's the that's the focus. Uh, the focus of the company is to get there through the filing of the Form 10. You know, I get a lot of emails uh, every week, uh, Jim, on you know how do I, you know, ask the companies that, that come on my show, uh, why did I pick the uh, companies I have out in my new book called Nano Stocks, Big Profits, and it all starts with management. And I tell people, you know, not only do you got to look at the product, most importantly, you got to look at management. Tell us a little bit about your management team. Well, sure. I, you know, there, um, you know, we've got uh, some really, really good people that have been uh, working uh, with Global Pay for some time. You know, myself, I've been in the prepaid debit card space there for 13 years, uh, and I helped develop the first electronic platform for moving money worldwide. But, um, you know, my leadership role is is really now in this in the fintech industry. Um, our president, Bill Rochefort, and also the executive VP of Sales and Marketing. Uh, Bill had, uh, is Bill Rochefort. Uh, Bill has been uh, involved uh, with us since uh, 2010. Um, he's been uh, a lead uh, salesperson at Sprint um, uh, for many, many years. Um, he's got great experience in the financial industry, and so he's he is our president and executive VP of sales. Uh, Joe Sieber, our CFO, has been involved in working with all of our shareholders and people that have invested money in us, and, and he's been extremely supportive with, he's got over 30 years experience in, in, in financial services. Uh, so it's been extremely helpful. Uh, Ted Morgan also, one of our board members, uh, came on about a year ago, and he's one of the top investment bankers uh, that, 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 that we've ever met. And he is with us because he's excited about our direction, and we appreciate he's, he's with us. 
And then we have one IT uh, expert, uh, Jorge Lascano, who is the IT, our IT financial expert, actually from Intradata, who we've worked with for the last five years. He is now on our board, and he heads up our our, our IT uh, direction of the company. So, you know, we've got a really good team here, and I'm I'm very uh, very supportive of everybody. You know, before I let you go, and correct me if my numbers are wrong, in 2015, you guys did about uh, 124000 in revenue. Do you have any projections of what 2017 is going to look like? Well, yeah, I would say uh, 2017 is probably going to be uh, between, I would say, uh, we're going to be in the half million to 600000 range uh, for this year, but it's going to grow dramatically in, in, in 18. Um, we, we're seeing um, a, a substantial increase over the next three quarters, um, you know, that we haven't had ever in the company. So I, all of a sudden things are changing because revenue is going to start hitting us. And I would say in by 2018, uh, it looks like we should be able to reach uh, between two and a half and three million dollars in revenue uh, just uh, in 2018. And then there and then there every year thereafter, we we expect a, a, a multiple increase in the in the revenue. Well, Jim, uh, you said it all. You said a lot today. You brought us up to speed. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll come back in 40 or 50 days, give us an update. I wish you nothing but continued success, and uh, I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I'd be glad to come back and share anything we have. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or this station.